Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome. It's great to be here at this year's Tech Live cybersecurity event. I'm Rocky Merchandani. I'm your host from the Trust, WSJ, and Barron's Group. And joining me today is Jay Chaudhry, the CEO and founder of Zscaler. Welcome, Jay. Thank you, Rocky. We've got a lot to discuss, right, on securing the enterprise with zero trust and AI, so I'm going to get right into it. Sounds good. Jay, cyber, cyber criminals, right, are, we know that they're typically able to sort of exploit new technologies, often faster than cybersecurity professionals are able to secure them. Do you think that's the same that's going on right now with AI? Short answer, yes, but let me give you a little context. Uh, about 18 months ago, I was asked to present to the board of directors of a very large bank in Asia Pac. Mm -hmm. The first question I got from the board member was, Jay, you're sitting in Silicon Valley, running one of the largest cloud security companies, and you work with Fortune 500 companies who, are, who have all the money, mm -hmm. expertise, and access to the latest technology. And I still see lots of them getting breached. If that's what's happening in America, what hope do I have? <laughs> I had to think for 30 seconds because I hadn't expected the question. The short answer was, Large enterprises have lots of inertia. Mm -hmm. Hackers have no inertia. Okay. Wow. Think of it. Today, almost 50% of the security spend goes on firewalls and VPNs, a 30-year-old technology. You get breached, you have 200 firewalls, you find buy 400 firewalls more. Because you do what you know. When technologies are changing, hackers are embracing the new stuff. We must change in a step function. Now, AI, yes, we have access to AI, hackers have access to AI. AI is making it easier to really discover attack surface and all the stuff. But if enterprise can move faster, mm -hmm. we have an edge over them. So it's up to the IT leaders, security leaders to drive it. Inertia is a powerful thing. When disruptive technologies come, generally there's a lot of discomfort. The lower you go down the organization, the bigger the discomfort. Unless leaders drive it, you're going to be falling behind. So if you take an action, take the lead, there's no reason why hackers should have, who should have an advantage in AI. So Jay, talk to me about how AI advancements and a zero trust <laughs> cyber security strategy work together. Yes, good question. I had a meeting with a group of CFOs, mm -hmm. and they said, Jay, we are spending all this money on cyber, and still companies are getting hacked. Why isn't our money mm -hmm. making the difference? And explain to me, they said, in non-geeky terms. That's a hard thing to do for CFOs. <laughs> right? So I came up with this analogy. I said four steps to rob a bank. Step one, you find all the bank branches. There are 300 of them. Two, you find the one that you can break in without getting caught. Perhaps the one that's in a secluded area, or perhaps it doesn't have surveillance camera working. You get in. Three, you move laterally, you find a cash safe. Four, as soon as you found it, you want to run out. Perhaps a getaway car is waiting for you. Four steps. Breaches happen the same way. One, they find your attack surface. Mm -hmm. What's your attack surface in the cyber world? Every public IP out there, whether it's a firewall or VPN or it's any application portal, is your attack surface. Two, they want to compromise you. They find a vulnerable application, or they find a weak user, mm -hmm. or social engineering works all the time. They compromise something. Three, if that entity, users or applications on your network, which is mostly how the world works mm -hmm. by being on the network, they move laterally, they find high value data, encrypt it, ask for answer. Four, they don't stop there. They exfiltrate your data, and that goes to the internet. You need to think about doing all four things. Right? AI is making it easier to find your attack mm -hmm. surface. So zero trust architecture was designed to make sure you're not on the corporate network. Uh, the way I describe z it, zero trust starts with identity not being on the network. Then we are a switchboard. We connect the right party to the right party without being on the network. Mm -hmm. That's a core zero trust. AI plays an important role. AI is actually helping us figure out the behavior, mm -hmm. patterns, and the like very quickly. More and more, we need to understand 
the intent. Identity will always be stolen whether you have a single factor, dual factor, triple factor. You need it, but you need to complement it with many of the risk signals you're getting from various things, including some of these AI systems, to really put it together. But the biggest thing you need to do is imagine if your corporation has no public IP that's facing the internet. Right. Think of it, no public IP. They can't discover you, they can't attack you. But that's a little bit different thinking. I think it's a matter of time in three, four years, all CIOC sales will say, yeah, I got rid of almost all public IPs. Think of six, seven, eight years ago when we used to be the lonely voice out there saying, eliminate MPLS, go direct to the internet. People say, really, you guys are crazy. <laughs> In three, four years, you'll be saying no public IPs. Imagine every branch office you have out there doesn't have a firewall. There's a big misconception. They think that anything that connects to the internet must have a firewall. The firewall says, I'm here, come and attack me. I'm here, come and connect with me. Imagine if the router sitting in the branch office has no listening port to the internet. It can't be discovered, it can't be attacked. Those are the kind of things you need to think about. You need to challenge your teams because the teams are doing the same thing. Nothing has changed in network security for the last 30 years. It's the same firewall sitting there. Well, it may be doing some app inspection, but it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. The networking is the same. You get on the network, you move laterally. The bigger change to fix cyber is fixing your network. Fixing your network means eliminating your network. In COVID, you found that you could work very well from home without a corporate network on which you're spending 10, 20, 30, 40 million dollars a year. Internet can be your corporate network. Challenge your networking team. Of course, they won't be comfortable. They're gonna tell you, well, how could you hold me accountable when I don't control the network? Mm -hmm. But you've seen that in the data center world, you used to control everything. No, you got comfortable with the cloud service. Similarly, some of these step function technologies need to be embraced. You need to challenge the status quo. Jay, talk to me about how Zscaler has gone about building AI into the products. Yeah, AI needs to be part of every business. First of all, when we think about AI, we need to secure our customers. Mm -hmm. Secure use of AI is important. You can't be saying, stop, my company can't use AI. We do three things today in our product. One, since we are like a switchboard, we're like an international airport, all traffic goes through us. We are the best in the best position to say, what AI services are your employees using? There are thousands of them out there. We give you visibility, that's number one. Number two, we give you control for policy that says out of these thousands of services, mm -hmm. this group of users can access these five services and this group can access these five services. That's important. Number three, you can do data protection on top of that. Yes, you could use service A, but you can't be sending company confidential information or private data out there. That's a starting point. Then we're using AIML to improve cyber protection for our customers. We can do far better cyber protection mm -hmm. today. We have the network effect. 45 million users from over 8,000 companies, which includes over 40% of Fortune 500 companies, they go through us. We have about 420 billion transactions to understand what's going on mm -hmm. on the internet and across. We take all of that, apply that to do better detection of bad guys. Lastly, data classification. AIML can help you big time to classify data automatically so you can really have better policies around it. So Jay, we have just a, a couple minutes, one minute left, and I wanna make sure I ask you this question. So people in this audience, when they leave today, what's the conversation they should be having internally? The biggest thing you need to think about is, not technology, but the mindset change. Some of the basic concepts. Think of it, when you went from, when we went from traditional cars to electric car, they look similar from outside. You open the hood, there's nothing common between the mm -hmm. two. If you need to get zero emission, you can keep on tweaking your traditional car, you'll never get there. If you need to get better cyber protection, you should think about newer technologies. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the term zero trust has been hijacked. 
It's natural for incumbents to hijack it because they're getting disrupted. So asking the team to say, reimagine your network, reimagine your security, that means thinking about step function technologies that can help you. Thinking about having no public IP out there. Mm -hmm. Thinking about having no corporate network where internet is connecting you to all kind of places. Those are the kind of questions they may be provocative, but that's where you start. Jay, I see lots of people taking notes. I know folks are going to want to connect with you later. That's our time for today. I could talk to you about this for a lot longer, though. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll be at home. <laughs> okay.